for anyone who is new. I'm the founder and the creator of More Than Existing. And um, I'm the author of My Truth of Existing Beyond the Reflection. So I now have two books out and a deck of the Everyday Goddess Oracle cards that hopefully will get out in the next few months. Um, but this is not even about that. This is about us. This is about the everyday woman beyond our titles, beyond the things that we do, beyond all of those things. It is about us. It is about what we, you know, about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, how we feel about um, our experiences and how we're experiencing life and how we're responding to life. And sometimes that is not always so pretty. Sometimes that's like, one of the worst experiences ever. And I am also so thankful that I oops, that I have found this microphone uh, because I've been using my condenser as my microphone for a while now, and it's kind of more echoey. And, um, and so I just found this one recently and I'm so glad I have it. And, um, and yeah, so I'm looking pretty casual today and I am being very casual in my appearance and I am sitting back because of one of the things that I have in my real life, in my real body, and that is a um, a spinal injury. And because I have a spinal injury, then there is days and times that, you know, that I'm not always at my absolute best and finest. And uh, even wearing pants, clothes, anything touching my body hurts. So if you know that feeling of having, you know, clothes hurts and people think that it's ridiculous, I can tell you that you are not alone and that it is a real thing that just the just a light t-shirt could hurt the body um and that's real <laughs> and so those are the remnants of a lifelong of a of a workaholic or as someone who absorbed and took on the weight of the world really truly thought the world was mine to hold all the responsibility for everything that was happening in the energy so today's discussion and where I really wanted to go with this comes on the heels of the more than existing summit that just happened on January the 6th and over the weekend. And, um, and this summit was an absolutely incredible uh, lineup of presenters and speakers. And there's always these moments and aha moments, no matter how far we've been in this program. And no matter how far we've been on the journey of healing and spirituality and all of those things in our lives is that there's, there are, you know, these moments that just, you just have it, those aha moments. And I'm like, it, it wasn't even anything I didn't know. It is something that I did know about myself, but I would never have used the words that came to me. So as I was in the experience of the summit, I had this realization, this knowing of um, like that just kind of hit home for the first time of, oh my God, I did this. Not created like the whole, it's not the first summit was ever created. It's nothing like that, but that the program and, and the work and, and the person and the person that I am and the person that I've become, I've created her. I've created her. And, you know, that's one of those moments where for a flash second, I had this sense of, you know, pulling back and going, oh, you can't do that. You can't say that. You need to, um, that's, that's going to sound like egotistical. But on the other hand of that, on the other side of that, the divine self within me recognized that um, I put in the damn work. and that I did do this. I am the creator of so many amazing, wonderful things, not alone, <laughs> not all by myself, but that I made a choice to say yes. And I made a choice a long time ago to say yes. And as you can see by the office around me, I still haven't really put my life back together since the summit because it's a, it's a marathon of a weekend, but I'm here and I'm here in this body but that, that moment and that moment in time when it just clicks, I had spent a lot of years of my life under rating and underestimating the things that I did. Like I could never see what I had accomplished. I could never see that I had ever done enough. 
it was always that sense of, okay, that's done now, what's next? And I still do that. I just finished writing a book um, the, a few weeks ago. And as soon as it was done, I'm like, that's it. That's that's it. No, oh my God, you wrote another book. It was like, oh, oh yeah. And I just closed the journals and just shut the book and done. And And I walked away. And it was this moment in time, and it wasn't anything in particular. It was one of um, one of my soul sisters and colleagues and partners and a lot of things. And she was and she was speaking, and and she was sharing one of my one of my teaching tools from more than existing. And I don't even think it was even the teaching tool itself. It was the realization that um, who I am on the other end of more than existing, who I am on the other side of writing those books, who I am on the other side of all these paintings that are around me, who I am on the other side of the pain, who I am on the other side of the suffering, uh, on the other side of traveling through, really taking that sense of accountability and responsibility in my life. Who am I now? And um, at 51, almost 52 years old, I'm seeing this sense of uh, new truths for myself and 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 feeling accomplished, feeling like for the first time, even though I've had success, that I feel the sense of being accomplished. Like I have accomplished beautiful things. I've accomplished amazing things. I've done great things to, to be able to even sit and honor what my body feels and to know that I'm coming in to do one of these and I could have got dressed up. I could have put a full face on. I could have put the makeup on. I could have, could have, could have, could have. I could have, should have, would have, right? It's like, oh my God, you should. You shouldn't show up in the world looking like this. You shouldn't be this way. But um, but I am. And here I am, plaid shirt, not even tucked in, um, not even having the body tucked in, no makeup, um, freshly shampooed hair though. Um, and and having, you know, the floors are not spick and span today. There's cables still left out. There's things still around. And um, and I'm still feeling pretty accomplished. My back has has pain, but it is spinal pain. It is it is not the back. It is nerve pain. And it's not an emotional wreck of a pain. It is not wondering over the weekend if I have done enough. I did have a little moment, but it's a, it's a sense of, I've truly come to this place of being able to be, you know, 80, 20 rule. Let's do the 80, 20, uh, being for 80% of the time at peace with myself and with where I have been and with where I'm going. But, um, but that's something that not everybody ever gets to feel how many women have people in general have truly come to the end of their times upon earth and had never experienced that never felt at peace never felt the sense of accomplished we're still trying to please still trying to fix still being a martyr to some sort of cause still feeling like they had to be so available to everyone else um i know people who right until you know, the moment they've left this earth and being in so much pain, they could barely stand up. They were still, you know, wondering if they've made the people around them happy instead of wondering, did I make myself happy? Did I do the things in life that I wanted to do for me? Did I ever live out my childhood dreams? Did I ever live out my dreams? Did I ever do the things that I really would have loved to have tried at least once? Did I at least try one of those things? Did I, you know, did I say yes to me and no to everyone else? So many of those things that um, that are so denied to women. And of course we are, we've come a long way with this, but I am the generation of being in my fifties. I'm not 25. I am in my fifties. I had really up until even prior to the summit, had really wondered, you know, was my was I doing enough for my career? And was I doing enough for my work? Whereas instead of looking at it as if this is my bonus life, this is my retired life, this is 
this is the life that comes after this is a this is more this really truly began as a as a sense of just honoring my own healing journey it was a sense of just sharing with other people and it was never really about if i was going to be this big major success it was about how can i use what i'm going through to inspire others as well and not lose myself and i had spent 30 years in the beauty industry I spent 30 years standing behind the chair uh, in the facial rooms. I had diplomas that from, you know, top of the wall to the bottom of the wall, it was so filled. When people ask me what I've done, what I've done with my life, I'm like, oh, I was, I was a hairstylist. I was an esthetician. But within that, you know, if you break those things down and you give it a title um, and, you, and you label out the things, it goes on and on and on and on. And there was a lot of things that I had done first in my life before it was ever popular, before it was ever big. And it was things that never, ever took off in my salon and spa until now it's like booming things. So I realized, you know, there was so much myself that was just that innovator. I was, you know, innovative. I was ahead of my times. I had visions. I was a visionary and I could see these things. I was a seer. I seen what could work. I seen what could sell. I seen what could make it. I seen what would make the place a better place or make the world a better place. But you can't sell what people are unwilling to see. You can't sell what people are not willing to buy into. So most times people are not willing to even buy into the possibility that they are so much more than they could imagine or that they, um, that they should be equally as important as the people in their family that they should be a, you know, um, they should be saying no to their children or they should be just letting someone else fold laundry and just put it in the closet looking like shit. Who cares? Who cares? As long as it's, long as it's done sometimes, not saying all the time, but sometimes maybe you should go around and not have your floor so can span for a week. Who cares? Right. And so that is, you know, some of those things really truly are the things that keep us farthest away from ourselves keeps us from being able to honor and live our truth and where we would like to see our our lives so we 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 often leave this earth with our truest version of ourselves still so buried and that is what i know i'm accomplishing in life is that at this age i am allowing myself to become the and being able to now feel my body and to be able to, to be able to use discernment in, you know, in my choices, but also to be able to, you know, communicate with the emotions, with my take the breath before I respond, how I react to the to the world. And to know that, you know, what I feel in myself is the fact of that I have a real true image that I can see of, of pain that exists within my body. And that anything else that doesn't feel like that is something that may be my body talking to me in another way. And if the pain of my body is talking to me, it is saying, you have now overextended yourself. You have now done more than you need to do. You did that career for 30 years. This is now your life. And that this is, this is, your, this is your passion. This is your life. This is just the things that you do when you are in the place to be able to do them. And if you're not in the place to be able to do them, then you're not available. And how many people are quite easily willing to say, I am not available. I'm sorry, I'm not available. And in more than existing, I teach this all the time about being available. And, you know, it's okay to not to be available. It's okay to say no. It's okay to, it's okay to, to just say, you know, like, I don't feel like this right now. All of those things really, truly are, you know, parts of our behavioral patterns and habits that are would have been considered defiant, uh, rebellious, uh, not being very nice, not being very considerate. But who are we not very nice to? Who are we not very considerate to? Who are we not thinking about? You know, it's the people that we are not meeting the demands. So deny you, be inconsiderate to yourself to make sure that you make other people comfortable and you live uncomfortable and to never really feel like you've ever truly accomplished saying yes to you. And so this we're as we move forward in this, in these days and in this year, I feel like that's a big, that's a big energy 
And so we can speak, I can speak alien. <laughs> I can speak about spirituality, woo woo. And I could, you know, really truly go to that place and talk about it on an energy level. But let's just talk about it on the level of how much energy do you have as a, as a woman? How much energy do you have to give to something? Um, how many times have you sat down and put any energy and focus on looking at what you have successfully done and where you have been? And when you can see how successful you have been, you stop seeking the same kind of success. And you're like, because you're no longer then trying to do it for the reason of you feel like you have something to prove. You just have something to live for. And when you change it from something to prove to something to live for, oh, it's pretty amazing. I just want to say it's like, uh, oh God, it's heavenly. <laughs> And, and it's like, and, you know, I always catch myself. It's always in those moments, but how this unfolds. And I think the key to that was I accept it in the moment of hearing a dear colleague, friend, soul, sister, partner to everything. When I heard it through her, and then I heard it through one of my other soul sisters and then another soul sister, then it was just like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did do that. And I couldn't have done that if I had not first become this person. Because the first thing you always have to do is to start becoming and start breaking up with, start unlearning, start, you know, unlearn what you think you know to be able to make yourself available for what you know, but don't know. <laughs> what we know, but we don't know. The things of what our body has been communicating to us, what our higher self, what that sense of our uh, locals within us has been connecting to us. And, and so finding, finding the power in that, finding the, the love and the joy in that moment, that, that sense of self, that brings self-acceptance, self-realization. It's a moment of enlightenment. It's a moment of awakening. These are awakening moments, right? These are times in our lives when we just start to see things in such a different, different way. And it's so incredible, so incredible. And then, and then, and then it was another, um, another presenter who's become a, who's become a friend as well and has been a student through some of the programs and was talking and all of a sudden on my journal, I wrote down, I am deserving. And then it was like, no, that's the, that's like the, um, that's like the cool whip. That's like the cool whip from the jar, from the tub. You're the frosting. You're like the homemade frosting. You're desirable. Deserving was like, you got that pat on the head. And yes, you're deserving. Yes, I'm deserving. Yes, you're deserving. But it was the next statement, which I was almost looking around the room and there was no one else in the room but me and my partner to be able to write this out. And I wrote, I am desirable. I am creating desirability. And I'm going to create a life where I desire my own life. Like I'm a little bit freaking envious of my own life. Like I'm envious of this, of this life. That's what I want it to feel like. So that I look in at my own life and go, holy shit. Like it is so incredible to be able to, to sit here and to be able to do this. And it's not big things all the time. It is some of the simplest little things. How many hours do you give yourself where you just get to sit and, and spend, say, you not have to be tied to a clock and be able to spend an extra half hour in the morning sitting down drinking your coffee. <laughs> How many, you know, these are the things that I'm speaking. Of. These are the things that, that really truly started to matter to me that became things like that I never really got to do throughout all of my, all of my life and being so, so busy and always on the go. And, and that sense of desirability was a, that's a like a taboo word to uh, to humbleness in a way. It's like the it's contradictory to what it was that I thought 
I had to be when I first even stepped into spirituality is like, oh, well, you know, you need to be humble, like humble pie. Like you, you really have to be. And so knowing now what humble really means instead of self-sacrifice and sacrificing everything is that I can be humble, proud, filled with pride, um, deserving and desirable. I'm adding to this. I'm adding to this list. And all of those things brought me to a place of joy. <laughs> and so uh, feeling this sense of joy, which means feeling that divine within. And what I wrote was kind of one of those things where I looked around the room again and I'm like, I, I'm not going to be so fucking available. <laughs> I'm not going to be so fucking available. And sorry, pardon the French. Um, pardon the French. Pardon my language. Um, and so that was interesting. Hmm. My great grandfather's French. <laughs> um, and I think he used to always say that to us. Um, and so, or maybe my mother used to say that to me. I think my mother. Um, but I, I'm not going to be so available. And it was like this moment of sliding from first to second to third base and then sliding into home. It was like a moment of feeling accomplished, aware, but also a moment of, oh, now you've hit that home run. Now you have to take it all the way home. Now you have to come home. And you got to come home to you and you have to decide for yourself of, are you going to be so busy that you don't get to embrace this self that you've, that you've become part of becoming her was not just for another job. It was not to create another work. It was for living. It is to live a life. And when you live, you can live and still create income. You can do you can do things, you can do a lot of things in less hours because we waste a lot of hours in a run of a day. How many hours do you waste just checking this? And you just say, oh, I'm just checking my messages. Oh, I'm just checking my email. But in the meantime, you check Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> all of those things you're checking. And while you're checking there, you're checked out on living for you I'm not saying gotta put that down all the time but but that is a that's a real reality right so when you start to you know see the sense of accomplishing you choosing you living life that is in alignment to you is that the time that you spend doing things with the people that you love is absolutely valuable it means they means something and you also learn the power of communication. You learn to communicate to the people because you don't have time to waste. So you learn to not to, to hold back in, to suppress that you're worthy to, you know, you're not the emotional garbage can dumping ground. You're not the emotional, emotional punching bag. So you're not here for everything to be dumped on or for you to, you know, always be so concerned about that you're going to, that someone is not going to like what you have to say. So you don't speak. It's like, once you start accepting this, this sense of you, you're like, well, I only got an hour with this person. So I don't have time to push your foot around this. I got to get this out. But you find the nicer ways, the nicer you are to you. And the more time that you have to be available to you, the more time that you got to be available, that you have to be available to your, you know, to your process, to your thought process, to your to your movements, to the sense of your ability to communicate and to your words. And you can think through your words and just say, you know what? I want to make the most of this time, but I really need to communicate through what I need to say. And it is a, it's a beautiful journey of evolution and growth. And for myself, personally, I can tell you that desirable is something that I'm snickering at three days later, two days later. Yeah. Two days later, I'm still snickering at desirable. And, um, and I, and I've just got so many things written down now that include that word and changing the language. And, 
And, you know, and that is something that I feel in my heart. I feel it in my body that I have just accomplished was that I can see the de- how I could be desirable and that I can create a life that even I am, that I, I desire, that I am excited for, that I, that I want to wake up to every day. Yeah. That I want to wake up to my life every day, that I want to be here in my life, that I want to live my life, that I want to, that I want to see what else I can do in a run of a day. So think about it. How about you? How about you? Are you having any of these aha moments or are you still in this F this, I have to choose me. I'm going to choose me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Um, But you never do do it. Maybe it's time to start doing that. But to get to there, first and foremost, see what you have already done. See yourself as looking in at those great successes around you and look at them and say, I did do that. I did that. I, I did that. I made that happen. I got to right there. I did that. And if you can see around my walls, if you're not listening to the audio and you're watching the video, then you can see all these paintings. I did that. Like them or not, do them have like them. And a lot of things in your life that you're going to do that you're going to be proud of, other people are not going to like. Or they're going to be envious or they're going to be critical or they're, you know, they're just going to be so judgmental. That's okay. You be proud. When it feels like your heart is being filled and you feel that sense of satisfaction, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It matters what you feel. It matters how you live your life. It matters. So what is one thing that you can do today to really, truly honor this within yourself? What is the one thing that you know that you have done throughout your life? What is the, you know, that you can look in now and say, I accomplished that. I did that. So that you can start to become the hero or as uh, Jane Houston says, um, heroine of your story in a feminine form, right? To be the heroine of your own story is, you know, when you can start to see where you have been that hero, where you can see yourself at the end of difficult situations, where you can see yourself, you know, at the, at the end of, of having to make a choice, uh, you know, you can start to find those successes. And then you start to see who you became, how you evolved through each of those experiences. How did these experiences impact me? How did they change me? How many did you not really truly celebrate you, but you allowed guilt and shame to override it? but you know you should have been proud of yourself, but instead you went to the shoulda, coulda, woulda, that you start to you know, repeat the habits, the behavioral patterns of discounting you, of taking full responsibility, of taking the blame, of, of second guessing yourself, of guilting, shaming, uh, being critical of yourself when you should have felt the sense of being proud, accomplished, um, content in your choice and decision. But society really truly didn't, teach us that guide us through that but we're here now to be that we're here now to live that we're here now to really truly do that and so if you're going to chase anything chase that version of you that you know in your heart you're meant to be and so what would you love to feel more of what would you love to be able to to feel more of every day when you wake up well that's what you do you start to create for that but first you start to see the one And when you start to see her within you, you know she exists to you, you know she's there with you, and you know that all you have to do is start bringing her to the surface. And the more you bring her to the surface, the more that she can start to step into becoming the I for you. And then this becomes the I am. And the divine and the light and the illuminating energy and the power and the conviction and all things that keep us moving forward truly then inspires you to always keep following that light, to keep moving, to never really look back other than to just kind of give a little, I was there, I was there. But finding that sense of self, it's a beautiful thing. 
And I truly hope that this is the year that more and more women can finally start to see you did this. Women bring the miracles to this world. The women brings the next generation to this world. We are amazing beings. And even if we've never gotten to bring one here, I'm sure you've contributed in helping another with theirs in this lifetime. And you've contributed to many other things. So, you know, we do these things. We are beautiful, beautiful, desirable beings. So honor that, ask yourself these questions. And I hope this inspires you to really truly see and looking at you and go, I did that. I did that. Remember, she is more than existing. And she is the everyday miracle. And she is you. And you are deserving, desirable, worthy, and all the beautiful things that life has is for you to now live. Much, much love. And I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye truest version of myself.